How's everyone doing? Good lunch? Okay. Okay, your time starts now. Why, well, show of hands, everyone here wear a pair of glasses or sunglasses? Okay, over 50%. So we're 3DNA, uh, 3D because all of our digital assets have a physical digital twin, and DNA because we reinvent the underlying instructions of the glasses industry. So our mission is to optimize the financial allocation within an eyeglass vertical, and our vision is to replace the tied capital and the stock inventory with glasses that are made digitally on demand. So the big problem in the industry is the money in the tied capital. Just imagine in the US, if you go to buy a Ford or a Toyota or BYD, they have over 100 cars on the lot. Now, if you go pick the one you want and you pay and you drive off, they still have 99 cars on the lot depreciating. But if you buy a Tesla, you pick the color, the wheels, the battery, the motor, the interior, you pay, then they make it. So Tesla has none of that tied capital that the legacy manufacturers have. So we apply that same principle to the eyeglass business. So what we've built is a digital asset platform that starts with our app and these retail kiosks. And these are our users. They love it, they're winning, which means we're winning and we are growing. So this is how we get paid. We sell digital production systems, retail kiosks, raw materials, and brand licenses throughout the platform. And we are the right team with the right experience and the mindset to execute. My partner, Ms. Yang, is a genius. She's got her undergrad from HKU, and she's a PhD candidate from Stuttgart. And I'm a third generation in the eyewear business. I did my first startup when I was 25 that I exited. It's got over 10 million in annual recurring revenue. We've got to 50,000 retail doors in just a few years by leveraging the lab bottleneck. So the eyewear market is pretty big. It's got over $170 billion of revenue, and it's growing quite fast. The bottleneck here is at the lab level. So there's 300 optical labs in the world, and they've already uh, gone through the digital transformation. So we start at the top. We redesign from a blank sheet of paper the whole value chain. And others are playing in our market as well. They're doing virtual try-on and uh, virtual mirrors, but we're the only ones that are addressing the smart production solution that addresses the tied capital. So we need to raise capital to do our digital production, our smart factory, A, B, C, and D. We've already built A, B, and C. We just want to do the smart factory. And so we're raising funding to build that smart factory right here in the cyber port, to put Hong Kong on the forefront of the map in digital production. The return on investment is quite substantial. It's over 300 million in five years in cumulative revenue. So if you're a brand, why would you tie up six months of cash and inventory when you can just sell on demand? These are our customers, the labs. You can notice that the units here, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, 87,000, this is not the yearly units. This is not the monthly units. This is not the weekly units. This is the daily units. So let's say we take Zeiss, if we get a $30 license fee times 10,000 a day, it's $30,000 a day in pure profit. Any questions? Hey, uh, why Hong Kong? So in the whole world, about 80% of the eyeglasses are manufactured in China, with Shenzhen being the central hub. So 12 years ago, I relocated from the US to move to Hong Kong so I could study eyewear manufacturing in Shenzhen, Dongguan and Shenzhen and, and Guangzhou. And what I found was a huge opportunity. The eyeglass industry production is still manual analog. It's made with human labor and molds and a lot of the inventory capital. And that's where this opportunity comes because these guys, when they go from web two to web three, the first mover is gonna take the majority of the lion's share of the profit. Here you can see some video of smart factory production using robotic automation to produce the frames. And this allows with extremely low cost of labor, high efficiency, and this allows the brands to get away from logistics and inventory and warehousing and distribution 
and they can just get a license. It takes all that tied capital off their balance sheet. So at the end of the day, it's purely a financial decision for them to stop buying six months to a year's worth of stock to move to the on-demand production model. We've already seen this with the lenses business. Lenses don't sell physical lenses. They sell a digital license file for the lenses and the labs produce it on demand in a smart factory just like this. How, how do you fend off uh, future competition? Because I remember that there was another uh, I asked company of 10 years ago or something, order and mail, like that's no physical shop. I forgot the name. It's so Warby Parker. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's Warby Parker. Right. How do, how do you, and then later on, they got crowded. The, the space got crowded. Right, the eyeglass market is a huge market, and Warby Parker is a direct-to-consumer brand, right. so they just sell through the mail, they ship the frames to you, you pick one, they send it back, they put the lenses in, they send it back to the customer. So we would be sort of like their supplier, rather than, than them buying six months of inventory from China to sit on their warehouse and depreciate, they would just order the frames from us on demand as the customers order them. So we're like the optimization of their supply chain. So we won't compete with them, we'll become their supplier. Time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.